We've had about 400 years of science and have plenty to show for it. Scientists have been nosing around everything. Though some think they should keep their noses out of this or that, it never stops them. Scientists ignore no trespassing signs. They'll snoop anywhere, and well they should because that's what science is all about, explaining how everything works. Scientists retrieve insights from whatever. The bounty has been huge, but for all their snooping, scientists have come up dry on the most valuable whatever of all, explaining value itself. Inanimate things value nothing. The moon, a shoelace, an electron, a doorknob, a car, a supercomputer, a galaxy. What do they care about? What did they try to achieve? Nothing. They're totally indifferent to what happens. But living beings are not indifferent. We care. We try to achieve valued states. First and foremost, staying alive instead of dying. Why is value relevant for living beings but not for inanimate objects? And what is value anyway? After 400 years accumulating an astonishingly detailed scientific account of the physical universe, we still don't have a scientific theory of what value is. With our detailed understanding of computer mechanisms, we know how computers compute. You'd think that by now having detailed life's mechanisms, we would have an established scientific theory of value, but we don't. You might think we do. Evolutionary theory, right? Well, it explains how valuable adaptive traits change over generations, but it doesn't explain what value is. Evolutionary theory assumes values. It just addresses how values change. Think about it. Though evolutionary theory is solid, the origins of life and with it the origins of value remain mysteries. Chemicals are attracted or repelled, but they don't value what they're attracted to over what they're repelled by. DNA molecules don't value anything either. Genes aren't selfish. Molecules value nothing. Of course, you try to achieve what's of value to you. Now, can you put your finger on what in you does the valuing? Is your valuing in your heart or brain? Where exactly? Are your values in your mind? Well, where's that? Scientists know plenty about the brain's mechanisms, but still can't find a mind in there. It's as though value is on the other side of some impenetrable wall, inaccessible to scientists. Dualism argues that the wall is real. We just have to accept it, and don't worry, we can still do science. Just different science on either side of the wall. On the physical science side, just apply physical laws. On the other side, simply assume values. Physicists can say the moon values a rising tide, but life and social scientists can say that organisms value things because obviously they do. We can explain how values cause physical behavior. Hunger explains eating. It's just a different kind of cause and effect. Valuing is the cause, eating is the effect. Materialism says, that's not explaining, it's describing. Hunger is explained by the secretion of neurochemicals and hormones. Values are all reducible to physical mechanisms. You're just a complex machine. Really, there is no wall keeping us from understanding values since all values are reducible to physical phenomena, just like everything else. Mysterianism counters that the wall is real and scientists will never be able to explain values since, for all our investigation of chemical mechanisms, we remain unable to explain subjective experience. For example, why hunger feels like hunger. And panpsychism argues that the wall isn't real because everything has experiences. Even subatomic particles are altered by experiences. There's only one reality. Everything physical is also subjective. Everything has values. So there you have it, four possibilities. Do science differently on either side of the wall. Declare the wall an illusion because there's only physics and chemistry. Declare value an eternal mystery. Or declare the wall an illusion because everything has values. None of these solutions are scientifically satisfying, which is why, though scientists regularly converge on theories, they're nowhere near converging on a theory of value. Now here's a new alternative explanation developed by Berkeley scientist Terence Deacon. Consistent with our intuitions, there really is a divide between living, value-driven behavior and non-living, valueless phenomena. But it doesn't divide reality. Reality is all physical. Valuing isn't the result of something added to physical reality. Rather, it results from the way that living beings prevent possible work, and as a result, valuable work becomes more likely to occur. 
The secret to value lies in the special way that living beings constrain or limit possibilities. Think of it this way, you could do lots of different work with your energy, but you focus on valuable work. You constrain yourself, limiting your work to your priorities. You don't dither doing just anything. You focus your work and on what primarily? On staying alive, on maintaining your ability to focus your work. All living beings are like that. Life started when a physical system happened to channel or constrain energy into work that kept the system going. Organisms are systems that constrain energy, channeling it into valuable work that regenerates that ability to constrain energy into valuable work. It's a self-perpetuating cycle. Constraints channel energy into work to regenerate the constraints that channel energy into work. Even the simplest organisms have the ability to channel energy into the work they value. We see it in how they try to stay alive and reproduce. Of course their values are unconscious or felt, rather they are a product of their ability to prevent counterproductive work, thereby yielding productively and reproductively valuable work. No wonder we can find the thing in us that does the valuing. It's not something added to the physical. Rather, living and valuing are a constrained subset of physically possible work. That doesn't explain subjective experience, why hunger feels like hunger. Still, we're not going to be able to explain the feeling of value if we don't even know what value is or how it happens. And Deacon, a neuroscientist, is working on explaining subjective experience too. Watch the next video to get Deacon's theory of how value emerged at the origin of life. And thanks for watching.